Good afternoon, South Africa, and a very warm welcome to you this glorious Thursday afternoon. My name's Jeannie D. And I'm Bonnie <laughs> Bully. <laughs> welcome to Afternoon Express. <laughs> I was actually going to say I look like Wednesday, Adam. So you do, but you look gorgeous. Wednesday. I love it. But basically, today is a hot show, and we've got so much to fit into the show for you. We just don't want to waste any more time. Danilo is in the kitchen with our first guest. <laughs> Indeed, coming up this weekend at the CTICC in Cape Town is the Good Food and Wine Show. And because we bring you the best of the best right here on Afternoon Express, today we're joined by one of the headliners of the show. He's one of Australia's top chefs and not only is he a force to be reckoned with in the kitchen and with multiple international award-winning restaurants, but also on the screen where he puts Aussie kitchen hopefuls through their paces on the MasterChef Australia show. We are truly honoured to have George Kalumbaris in our loft today, but particularly in the kitchen. Welcome to South Africa and welcome to our loft. Thank you so much. And can I say, your jump looks fantastic. I was told I by Jeannie that I look like a grandpa today and I did go thrift shopping to go oh. and put this together, but uh, I'm warm. Obviously, they're not up to date with fashion, are they? <laughs> <laughs> welcome welcome to South Africa. This is what happens in our TV show. You look show, wonderful. Thank it's you. It's good to be here. George, it's good to have you back in the country. I mean, you've been here a few times. Yeah. You love the place. But I think, I'll, let's go right back to the beginning. Who was baby George? What, what oh, were you like gosh. as a child? And I was you're a menace. A ADD, bad. Okay. Um, so, yeah, look, you know, I, I just, I, I don't like dull moments. Mm -hmm. um, for me, life has got to be full of uh, craziness, um, pressure, because mm -hmm. I think it's a, a, a privilege to have that. And I guess that's why I'm in the, a, a craft that I, I love and adore yeah. because it's constantly moving and shaking. I mean, my life is incredible mm. and I love it. I'm very privileged. So in so many ways, you're a pressure cooker, but that's... That's another side of the coin. So uh, everyone that you ask about MasterChef has always said that there is something so unique and so brilliant about the way that Australian MasterChef is put together. Yeah. I mean, particularly every local South African that I've spoken to loves the show so much. Um, what is it about the show that you think you bring to and what does it bring to audiences that's so unique? I think it just resonates with so many people around the globe. I mean, we're, our show's on in about 180 countries at the moment, mm. and we love the fact that South Africans have embraced it and love it dearly. I mean, back home at, at my restaurants, we're constantly getting South Africans that are on mm. holidays coming sure. through the restaurant to try some of my food. So um, it's it's wonderful, and, and as I said, we're, we're so privileged after eight years of, of television, mm. you know, um, uh, over 700 episodes of TV, who, who would have thought, sure. you know, three sort of guys that love food and are, are food nerds, yeah. um, and, and here we are <laughs> We've made global history. I mean, let, let's talk a bit about that TV history, because, I mean, you could very easily get settled into becoming a TV chef and yeah. sort of sit back, relax, and yep. enjoy the ride, but you are so hard at work. I mean, all your restaurants are, are incredible be brilliant, I mean, world-renowned. Yeah. And how do you keep that balance? And what is it about those restaurants as well that you try to make unique? Because now there's pressure on you to obviously yeah. perform. Yeah, exactly. Look, at the top end, my, my fine dining restaurant, the Press Club, is constantly evolving. I've got a development kitchen next door. And then there's all the rest of the restaurants. Um, there's, there's about 11 venues, mm. you know, 350 staff. And for sure. me, I, I need to be still cooking. I'm still a chef. I'm a cook. And, you know, I'm, I might not be over the stove, but I'm, I'm definitely close to the flame. Keeping I, I know mm. what's going on. And um, as we speak, it's um, midnight in Australia and, and, you know, the last tasting dishes are being served. Sure. Um, and, you know, it needs to be absolutely spot on. Sure, man. It's so incredible to have you in the country, because it's not your first time here. I mean, we're looking forward to seeing what you're going to be doing with the Good Food and Wine show this year. But mm. what have you tasted while you've been in the country and what are some of the things you're hoping that South Africa will bring to you? I, I ate last night at the Test Kitchen, uh, Luke Dale Roberts, mm. who's a, a great chef. Um, yeah. And I thought it was fantastic how he took those sort of classic sort of South African dishes, but really, mm. you know, turned it up. So there was a dish of his play on the... On and I'll correct my, the way I pronounce it. Okay. Uh, schnook? Schnook. 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 Well, yeah. it's not schnook, it's just schnook, but yes, schnook, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it was delicious. Yeah. But, you know, I, I'm, you know I've, I've, been, I've obviously been here before, and when I was up in Derwin... Uh, uh, Derwin. <laughs> Derwin. Derwin, yeah. <laughs> um, I had the most incredible bunny chow. So yeah. I'm, I'm excited to, ta to taste lots more incredible cool. I'm keen locals. to see what South Africans, obviously. So we've asked you on the social media sites what it is that you would like him to taste while he's in the country. So you can continue to share those comments on the social media sites. But uh, the Good Food Wine Show, obviously, is here. And mm -hmm. what are you going to be doing? I mean, you're headlining. What does that mean? How can we come and experience your brilliance? Yeah, look, we'll do a couple of dishes from my, my new cookbook, but then we'll do some, you know, aspirational dishes from the press club. So my, I've got a, 
a team of four here um, that have come from Melbourne. So we're, we're here to hopefully inspire. We're here to, you know, um, you know, have some laughs and, and obviously tell some stories. Mm. Um, that's the whole point of, mm. of me coming here. But uh, at the same time, I'm soaking up this incredible country. I was out in Stellenbosch yesterday and I was just like, this is God's country. Hey. I mean, mm. it's just incredible. Where else and in the, the world? wine is delicious. Yeah, where else yeah. in the world can you sip on a brilliant red wine with a beautiful mountain view and the weather being so brilliant? Yeah. It's the problem absolutely... is too much red wine. <laughs> <laughs> That's something Ginny knows a lot about, right? I so we're, no such thing. we're actually going to get up and yeah, make exactly. our way to the kitchen because I want you to do us a favour here today. So yeah. we've obviously got two of the most beautiful women in the country working on our show today. Yes. And they say that they love food and we've, we've been on the show for over a year now and you guys have got enough experience. So what yeah. we thought we'd do is we've packed this, uh, the loft kitchen with full of ingredients. You're going to have to just, off the top of your minds, make something that's going to impress George because he's tasted it all. He's thought a lot of it was wow. terrible. A lot of it wow. was amazing. So I, I suggest okay. you guys get going. Are you up for the challenge? Wow. Yeah. 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 I'm up for it. Jeannie yeah. versus Boston's going to win. You know, I cannot cook. This is yeah. like, I make really good reasons. Yeah, nice, nice, nice disclaimer. Nice disclaimer. Not going to help you win. <laughs> Ladies, okay. your challenge starts now. Okay. I like how you played that down, you know? <laughs> It's not about personality, George, it's, and it's not about looks, no, it's, it's all about, about the, the food. dish. It's all about the food. I, okay. I don't really... I'll, see, look, already straight straight up. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, someone's... She's <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> being what, what, okay. what is it? Can you please not to... cut your <laughs> fingers? <laughs> George, what is it about cooking shows and food that people love so much? Why do people love food always on TV so much? It's always a hit. I think, you know what it is, this is a common language for the world. It mm. doesn't matter what country, where you come from, your culture, your religion, your background. Mm. Your, your ethnicity, it's food speaks the, the, the speaks that beautiful thing to everyone about their past, their nostalgic memories, their family. Yeah. Um, so it's wonderful that the world's embraced cooking shows. Oh my gosh, that is like the ultimate yes, cheese, cheese sandwich. on toast. That's exactly what I'm doing. Oh, wow. <laughs> and so some people just haven't learned the language, but but I get, yes, I, get I get that. Yes, but it's that's a all right. You know what? I do love anchovies. They're delicious. You? Awesome. Well, it's, it's like the it's I'm like, still anchovies. it's like <laughs> mommy of the sea. You know, it's it's um. D it's really, it's really yummy. Oh, what Can is I that? Quickly is that like salt? Oh, he's gonna, she's gonna think it's hollandaise sauce. I think sauce. it's already on for you. Yeah. I know they had to do that for me because. Mm. Yeah, it's on. Said, okay, it's interesting. Gonna... Oh shucks, nice. Don't do Jeannie. that. Nice, You're gonna burn nice. yourself. Okay. <laughs> what are you hoping to achieve by the sandwich? Because it looks like you just cut cheese and put it on bread. Mm. Sorry, I'm just. Is there anything more that's gonna be added? Yeah, I'm gonna okay. make a nice little dipping sauce for it. And Bonnie's going with the styling. She's putting like a thing to make it look pretty. She's drizzling things on her dish. Let me hold that chopping board yeah, for you. Yeah, please. Yeah. Oh, that's minus points if the judge to do it has like to help you. You're doing it very elegantly because Clem teaches us very well. But oh, yeah? It's pressure, pressure. It's pressure. It's a Time pressure in this kitchen, ladies. Yeah. Time pressures. What do we got over there? A little dressing. Honey? She's, what else is in there? Mustard. Mustard. Oh. Okay. Okay. Oh, Red okay. Wine. Is this a secret South African vinaigrette? <laughs> I don't know. I hope it's going to taste good. <laughs> well, no, you, you, it's quite clever. I mean, sweetness from the honey, uh, you know, uh, acidity from the vinegar, and obviously that the, the mustard's going to give it some roundness. So you're onto something. I think you need some uh, olive oil, but here. Yeah. I think it's a nice a point of vinaigrette. Thank you. vinaigrette needs a bit of olive oil. Yeah. Thank you. Thank That's you. a nice a point convenient. about being a TV chef is that you can pretend like it's probably going to taste terrible, but you can say, oh, it looks a little, oh, perfect combination. No, all you can amazing. be honest I'll, I'll turn that over for you. Oh, you are a legend. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> what is Bonnie right. waiting for? Guys, your time's starting to run out. Is I'm going to give you out? another, like, Please 10 seconds to finish this out. It. What is Nine, it? Nine, um, eight, fish what? seven, wow. six, six. I can't get it out. No, I've got a plate. I've got a plate. It's fine. Three, Sorry. two, one. And I'll let you finish your plating, Jeannie, and then we're going to be done. I want you to cut a sliver that he's allowed to at least nibble on. Yeah. Ooh, okay, you're not we're plating it, you're barking it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, you're cutting man. it directly onto oh, wow. the board. Wow. Clearly, we know what cutting boards are. Voila! Incredible. We'll see if she's done. Do you want to maybe taste her dish in the meantime? I, I, can I give I'd you a knife and fork It's just a spin on a Caesar salad. <clears throat> Let me steal your knife and fork from nothing, here. Nothing, uh, you know, nothing big. Just something I whipped up quickly. <laughs> okay, that's a knife and fork for you. <laughs> All right. Okay. Look, first what are you start? calling it? <clears throat> your plan it's a Caesar. spin. It's my personal spin on a Caesar salad. Yeah. Okay. I, I love your presentation. It's um, very. You. um Interesting. <laughs> that's, that's a good way to put it. That's, yeah. a, that's, that's encouraging. Chicken. I think that's a good plan. Uh, anchovies. <laughs> oh, um, gosh. Yeah. Ooh, I, I love the sand on the bottom of yeah. the lettuce there. That's <laughs> wonderful. It's always... Rustic. Rustic. Yes. Yeah. Rustic. It's rustic. all about Africa getting I, down to the earth. Is it a rustic Caesar salad that I mentioned? Yeah. <laughs> Yesterday it was Africa Day. It's about getting, getting in touch with the earth. Mother Earth. Come mm. on. Mm. Lovely. Yeah. Um, mm. Chicken cooked well. You didn't do that. 
that's okay. <laughs> Do you taste the um, egg? There's egg. The, the egg was very good. I love the way you've cooked the egg. It's nice and still soft <laughs> and, 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 you know, I think it's a... A fantastic Caesar salad. Yeah, I must say Thank that you. One, the one art that you must have mastered is taking TV bites. Because it's one thing I'm terrible at. I just like munch the whole thing. Jeannie's yeah. got this elegance. But she's kind of cheated because she's used the extra no, time that just... she had when we were there. Yeah, to I like, know. No, just... I didn't really. But so I'm confused. What, what is that? It's a, it's a, it's a dipping sauce. So I thought it was a bee's knees, three cheese, grilled cheese. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> She's named it and all. You've been practicing, haven't you? All right. <laughs> he hey. tasted the sauce <laughs> separately. Now you have to dip your cheese. So what do I do? Dip and... Yes. Dip and munch. So, Jeannie, please tell yeah. us, which two cheeses have you used? I used the yellow one, the white one, and blue. <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> and Perfect. the mouldy one. Did you use the mouldy one as well? And? The bread's Ooh. missed. So, you know, he, he clearly was enjoying that. He took a too big a bite, okay? Look, obviously, um, the, the simplest things in life is cheese, cheese and toast. I mm -hmm. mean, delicious. And a, and a lovely little accompaniment there of that dressing. Okay. <laughs> um, so, who's our, who's our winner, though, between the two? There has to be one. A Caesar salad. A lot of hard work's gone into that. A simple cheese on toast with a vinaigrette. You know what, ladies? It's a draw. There was oh. sand in his salad! <laughs> 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 All right, guys, if you want to catch George in action this weekend, then make sure you head to the Good Food and Wine Show at the CTICC in Cape Town. And if you haven't got a ticket yet, well, today is your lucky day. We're giving away sets of double tickets to the Good Food and Wine Show right here on Afternoon Express and right now. All you have to do is SMS the keyword TICKET to 33728. SMSs cost 1 Rand 50. T's and C's apply and can be found on afternoonexpress.co.za. Now, after the break, we're joined by an expert to look at how to get the best out of a night's sleep. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, over the last few weeks, we've taken you on an incredible Glade scent experience with clean linen, lavender, ocean escape, and morning freshness. Today, we touch back, back on clean linen and the importance of sleep with Dr. Scott Barker. Welcome to The Loft, Dr. Scott. Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Yeah. We all love a good night's rest, but why is sleep so important for us? Well, studies have shown that if you subject a rat to sleep deprivation for 30 days, they die. Wow. Yep. Um, all our physiological functions, our cells, they all need rest. Uh, there's a very rare medical condition called fatal familial insomnia, which is, uh, ends in death. People wow. are unable to sleep. So, um, yeah. if you can relate it to a battery, if the battery is empty mm -hmm. and you keep mm -hmm. on using it, it eventually loses its power. Mm -hmm. um, all our functions need rest to recuperate. Yeah. yeah. Well, not only is sleep important, but good smelling clean linen is important. But why is that? Why is linen hygiene an important factor in getting good sleep? Well, I think it's there's a couple of factors. Um, Smell on its own. Um, they've been, there's recently been a survey done by the uh, National Sleep Foundation in the States. And three quarters of the respondents um, mentioned that they sleep better on the day that they wash and change their linen. Wow, wow. Yeah. Then okay. you get things like house dust mites and bed bugs. Uh, house dust mites are everywhere. They're more plentiful in unclean linen and these things can lead to allergies which could lead to insomnia mm -hmm. and affect our mm -hmm. quality of sleep. Yeah and what's really cool is that Glade has this beautiful um, clean linen fresh smell so if you want that clean linen smell in your room you can definitely get yourself this Glade spray. So please take us through some sleep positions and why how we can improve our sleep. Okay um, I don't think the sleep positions are that important uh, they can help with certain conditions. There is there's a concept called sleep hygiene, which is very important for anybody that is experiencing difficulty sleeping. Uh, sleep hygiene revolves around getting into a routine where you have similar, similar sleeping hours for seven days a week. Mm -hmm. um, you need to avoid stimulants like nicotine, coffee, chocolate, Big meals before you go to before bed. Before you go to bed. Yeah. It's always a good idea to get some exercise in in the day, mm. in the morning or in the afternoon mm -hmm. if it's vigorous mm -hmm. exercise. Uh, relaxing things <coughs> like yoga is great for in the evening before you go to bed. Yeah. Um, another very important thing is the bed should be for sleeping and sex. <laughs> it's not an office. You don't work with your cell phone, yeah, read yeah. books, or watch, watch TV. TV. 
the brain then... Or uh, fight yeah, exactly. with your spouse. Um, <laughs> your brain then associates the bed with a place where you're doing activities. Mm. It needs to be... You need to train your brain that the bed is a place where you unwind, you Rest. get rid of your thoughts, you get into a calm place wow. and you can sleep nicely. Wow. I mean, does your sleep position affect how you... I mean, the quality of your sleep? Because, for example, I sleep in a fetal position all the time. Um, and then when I'm really exhausted, I'm like a starfish and... Yeah, Face the up. fetal position so, is the most common sleeping position. Yeah. It's probably the best position for somebody with lower back pain. Mm -hmm. um, it's always a good idea to put a couple of pillows between your leg, mm -hmm. legs. Um, it's very individualized. Um, if you have a sinus, a stuffy sinus problem, it's a good idea to sleep on your side mm -hmm. with the affected sinus to the top, on the, on oh. the higher side, and to prop yourself up with some pillows. Wow. If if you suffer with sleep apnea or a heavy snore, it's better to sleep on your side. Mm -hmm. um, if you have neck pain, it's not a good idea to to free fall sleep. That's sleeping right. on your tummy. Yeah. Oh. So there isn't one best position, but for for every body will eventually find what works for them. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, that's very informative. Thank you so much, Dr. Scott, for joining us today. It's a pleasure. So if you want that fresh, clean linen scent in your home, then this might just be the answer for you. This is your last chance to enter to win the Glade Grand Prize consisting of a bed makeover and consultation, a paragliding session, a waterfront adventure, sunset cruise for two, and a Glade gift hamper, all, you all to the value of 22890 All you need to do is SMS the word Glade and your name and city to 33378. For details of the competition, check out T's and C's on our website, afternoonexpress.co.za. Jeannie's in the kitchen. After the break, it's time to share another moment with Five Roses. South Africa's favourite tea is expertly blended to ensure that it remains of the highest quality consistently. It is this commitment to excellence that Five Roses puts into making the perfect cup of tea, which delivers its uniquely superior and distinctive taste. Five Roses salutes South African women, who too are committed to excellence. So today, we're going to be chatting with one of our favourite guests on Afternoon Express, Jackie Berger, the matriarch of the local fashion business who is dedicated to nurturing South Africa's design talent. She's joining us for a cup of Five Roses Chai Spice Tea, an exotic blend of aromatic and spicy flavours perfect to warm you up this winter. Other flavours that we've got is orange and also lemon. So don't go away, we'll be right back after the break with Jackie Berger and Five Roses right here in the loft. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now, whether she's front row at Fashion Week or hosting one of her exclusive soirees at Salon 58, Jackie Berger is a woman who inspires style and has actively nurtured many of the country's emerging design talent. We're honoured to have her here in the loft today. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you. Now, you are an absolute icon, but I want to know, where did it all begin for you? How did you start navigating your way through this industry? I think mine is uh, quite a serendipitous journey. Um, I studied sociology, I've got an honours degree in sociology and during my time at Varsity there was a lot of nudging towards style and fashion, not really knowing that that's the direction I want to take. And an opportunity presented itself and I entered the world of commercial fashion and from there I went into publishing and I ended up as um, editor-in-chief of Al South Africa. So it's very much a, a quick synopsis, but the essence of it was that nothing was planned. It was really opportunities and I suppose a big dose of curiosity. Mm -hmm. And then about two years ago, it was that kind of what if question. Um, can I start my own business, which is something that I always anticipated. Um, and that's where Salon 58 um, was birthed and my own venture presented itself. Well, on that, tell us a bit about your, your soirees at Salon 58. It's, uh, it's something that I was inspired by when I um, had the opportunity to go to France and really experience the concept of a salon firsthand. Mm. And that coupled with my years in um, the publishing industry and really working with content, the two concepts came together. So a soiree as such is almost like a live magazine. Um, it's taking a gathering of uh, women 
Mm. Um, although we're very happy to have a few men starting to, to <laughs> join us at the <laughs> Salon Soirees yeah. and then to unpack content. Um, I work with a very lateral theme. The one I'm working on now is grace, um, yeah. which is happening in August. So I'll start with a concept grace. and then mm -hmm. I will look at content that align itself with that concept and I will then work with an incredible group of very, very creative collaborators and wow. we will then look at derivatives of content, whether it's fashion, style, beauty, food, decor, and we will then pack, package it and, and present it on the day. It sounds amazing. Now set the scene for us. What would a, a woman and very stylish men also gain <laughs> from visiting one of your soirees? Well, essentially the, the salons, once again, if we look at the essence and the origin of it, was a place of gathering, as I said before. It's about community. It's about conversation. Yeah. Um, and it's a place on the one hand of entertainment, but on the other hand, it's also a movement. And there's very much part of, of the day is to engage with maybe content or concepts or dialogue that is a bit provocative because yeah. it's not just about having fun, which of course there's lots of that, mm -hmm. but it's really about dialogue and, and leaving having had the opportunity to make new friends and yeah. to experience new tastes, to experience new ways of doing things and living with a narrative and an experience. Wow. Now, collaboration, I think, is definitely the buzzword of our decade, I think. So you've always really done this, though. If you look at how you've always supported emerging talent, you are still doing that, finding young talent from a grassroots level and then bringing them up. How are you doing this? I think what I've always strived for in my journey and my career and what I essentially do now is a sense of entrepreneurial opportunities. And I think that's exactly what the value of co collaboration mm -hmm. offers us. And in the same sense, working with young talent, it's looking at raw opportunity, it's looking at developing potential. And I think my experience has also sharpened my my senses to yeah. to the the purpose of curation and looking at potential and then now with the salons having a platform for it exactly. to to be engaged with and to offer young talent an opportunity to be interpretive and also what's very important is a very educated audience an audience mm. that's actually looking for a place where there is dialogue and it's not just something that they hear or see but they can also meet the maker so exactly to speak. that is very exciting so who are the, the young designers to be looking out for um, at the moment i think there's there's a very interesting school of of young design coming through but you know what's really exciting for me is that we keep on using the word young yeah. And it's essentially about the collective. Yeah. Because if we forget about the existing designers that, that's been the trailblazers, yeah. we're not going to develop the fraternity of design and the, the sure, currency and the economy so of design. So although there are a few very, very exciting young ones, what I try to do is to balance it and to offer the, the salon audience a cross-section yeah. of design. But once again, it's across fashion and beauty and decor and arts and crafts, because the wow. other very important opportunity now for me is crafts. If we look at what's happening globally, there's a return to artisanship. Wow. And I think that's where, where the focus is going to be increasingly for me, because it's one thing if we start marrying and fusing different um, artistic talents, that's when we really grow our economy. That sounds so exciting. Now, what's next for you? I mean, you're going into year two of Salon 58 and apparently you're writing a book. I've been commissioned to write a wow. book. <laughs> um, I've asked for an extension, <laughs> if I may. I think it's it's so daunting. It's it's something that you know. Once again, you 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 consider it. Wouldn't it be nice? Because you read all these 
incredible books. And I think because I've been so blessed to have had yeah. this incredible time in the industry spanning a f quite a few decades, and also because I like the energy of sharing ideas and concepts and experiences. Um, when I was approached by a publisher, it was sort of, yay! And then you sit down in front of the computer and you sort of think, okay, where do I start? Oh, that must um, be so hard. And what's really fascinating for me is I, I really... Writer's block, it exists, yes. um, even after years of being an editor. And then um, I started exploring the, the whole kind of um, mind mapping and really what we refer to as scrapbooking, mm. um, which is also a very, very handy tool to actually pinpoint not just your thoughts, but your visual thoughts as well. Oh, wow. And that helped me to realize that I need to visually think. So the book is, is happening. Yeah. Um, and the, <laughs> I've, I've kind of persuaded, as I say, the publisher to give me an extra year yeah. because nine months was just, especially in year two sure. of, of a venture, because that's when you really start honing the, the credentials, the business credentials of, of what you're doing. Because it's quite a thing. I can't imagine sitting down and actually penning something that's mm. happened in my life or mm. that I've got an opinion on. I mean, one would think you would just write, but it's got to be very well planned. OK, but we've got you here in the loft. I can't not ask. What is your style advice for the season that women must just know? Like a few basic bullet points. What do we need to know for this season? Well, I'm not really a seasoned person to start mm. off with. Um, the most important issues for me are attached to how a woman perceives herself. Yes. So it's always confidence. Uh, it's, it's my cliche I go to answer, but confidence is essential. Um, second to that is, is dressing your intelligence because it's about your creativity and understanding that. And I think once you've ticked those boxes, then we can go and we can play. <laughs> and, you know, if we, if we look at, in terms of what's emerging, this liberation of the 70s, yes, sometimes it manifests itself as lots of fringing and bell sleeves and bohemia, but what's really great about the 70s, it was a time when the, a democracy came through. It, yeah. it was after... The, the strictures of the 50s and the 60s and the 70s just brought this kind of liberation. My favourite is, as you can see, denim. Yes. Um, I think denim My favorite is... favourite is jeans. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's, it's possibly the, the most, the hardest working item in our wardrobes. But what's happening today is there's the age of casual, mm. where we can use what was perceived before as you only wear it when you over the weekend exactly. or at leisure, we can integrate that into our wardrobes and we can dress it with that intelligent mind whichever way we want. And you do look absolutely spectacular. Thank you always you. do. Thank you so much Thank for coming you. to the loft and sharing all of your perils of wisdom with us. Best wishes for the Salon 58. I still have to come. I will, I, I'm coming. I promise. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> it's on TV now. I have to. <laughs> Exceptional women like Jackie Berger are a testament to the resilience and strength of South African women and all that we can accomplish when we believe in ourselves. Much Like Five Roses is committed to bringing you a range of superior tasting and refreshing teas while equally maintaining their heritage of quality blends. Now this month stand a chance to win a fabulous Five Roses gift pack containing an assortment of their fabulous delicious teas and to stand a chance to win simply sms the keyword five roses your name and city to double three seven two eight sms's are charged at one round fifty and t's and c's do apply so visit our website afternoonexpress.co.za for details now join us again this time next week when we will be chatting to another exceptional south african woman and until then remember that nobody makes better tea than you and five roses it's time for us to give away more prizes right here on Afternoon Express. Smeg is giving away a stunning retro stand mixer to the value of 7,499 Rand. And all you need to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and enter. It's as easy as that. And what is more is that when you enter this competition, your name will automatically be placed in the draw for the grand prize of the new home for season three of Winner Home. The competition closes on Monday, the 6th of June, 2016. Only one entry is allowed per person and T's and C's can be found on the 
website. Now after the break, it's time for Winner Home right here on Afternoon Express, so stay right where you are. Afternoon Express. Now it's that time when every day here on Afternoon Express we step into the world of exquisite interior design with Winner Home. You'll see three talented contestants transform empty properties at Valdivia Estate State in the Cape Winelands into dream homes using finishes provided by Caesar Stone and Plascon. If you want a chance to win one of those finished apartments valued at over 3 million rand, go to privateproperty.co.za to enter the grand prize competition. Winner Home is proudly brought to you by Private Property in association with NetBank. This week is all about inspiring our design contestants and you at home. Today, we take a look at some inspiring finishes, starting with a man who has become world-renowned for his creative furniture design. Take a look. Renowned British designer Tom Dixon collaborated with Caesar Stone in an innovative installation called The Restaurant, where he used the four elements to inspire conceptual kitchen designs which pushed the use of Caesar Stone products to the limit. I was um, mystified at the beginning because you're just thinking, well, okay, it's a stone, so how do you make it more special than stone? But as you get to know the characteristics of the, the quartz and what it can do that stone can't is when it starts to get a bit more interesting. So the fact is that you can cut very fine holes in it, lots of them, in a way which uh, a natural stone might just collapse. You can curve it, quite difficult to curve, but you can do that. And then we started using it in a kind of hollow three-dimensional way for seating. And, and we were determined not to, to, to really use it as a, as a topping surface and, and really make more sculptures and, and, and use it in the round, which is why this installation looks so different from A, your normal kitchen, and B, your normal surface show, I guess. Oh, so beautiful and being manufactured from quartz, lending itself to being stunningly versatile and presented in a wide range of colors and designs, Caesar Stone is not only offers products particularly of quality, but of trendy and beautiful design. Being a sponsor on this season of Winner Home, we cannot wait to see what our three contestants come up with when it comes to integrating this amazing product into their designs. Today in The Loft, we have Marketing Director Trevor King with us. Welcome to The Loft. Thanks, Sin and Great to be here. Yeah, last time we caught up was at Decorex, and I really saw the amazing products you guys have put together. But yeah. I'm going to jump straight for straight ahead and really go straight for the jugular. What are the trends in terms of kitchens and surfaces when it comes to 2016? I think that in 2016, one of the trends that's emerging um, is of the artisan. Mm -hmm. um, the kitchen's becoming a place where you don't just make food. It's a place where you perform. Yeah. It's, so many people are into food these days with all the the food programs and all the interesting development around food, that the kitchen's becoming a place where you, where you create things, where you create food, where you yeah. entertain people. It's so much more than just a place that you cook. And think about it, there's so many new materials coming out, so many new ways to create different products. I mean, you've really got to know your stuff when it comes to preparing your kitchen, especially for something like longevity. I mean, people tend to go for the go-tos, but trends are here, style is important. I think everyone should keep, keep an eye on that. But your products are, are incredible for, for a number of reasons. But I've heard you mention a couple of times how versatile the product is. Tell us more about why it's such a beautiful product. I think that the thing about Caesar Stone is that it's engineered specifically to create a, a, a material that to fulfill a task. Mm. So all the qualities that you'd want in a durable material for a surface in your kitchen have been engineered into Caesar Stone. That's and fantastic. along with that, um, the, the beauty of the color development has just created a product that fits into most designs. Yeah. Not, not a lot of people spend much time on designing kitchens because they just think it's there. But people who do spend some time designing their kitchens are looking for a lot of advice when it comes to trying to prepare that. What, what do we look for when it comes to designing a brilliant kitchen? I think above all things, it needs to be an expression of who you are. Mm. It has to have a, a functional element. It's got to work. It's got to be easy to use. And it's got to have good design elements because you're going to put it in and it's going to last for... Mm. Eight, ten years. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I, I think that's the important part. Yeah. Speaking about longevity, obviously, you guys are always innovating and always creating. And I love that collaboration you did with Tom Dixon. I mean, your recent trip to Milan must have inspired you in so many different ways. Um, what was the collaboration about? Why, why partner with a furniture designer? I think the inspiration for, for uh, partnering with people like Tom Dixon is that they just take our product and they push it into spaces that we haven't been to. Mm. They inspire us to develop it into a direction that we haven't normally been mm. um, used to using it in. And Tom did that. He created four kitchens that uh, 
push Caesarstone into a design space that mm. is exciting and has opened up a whole lot of new opportunities. It's sure. challenging. Well, speaking of which, our contestants in Winner Home this season are going to have to go through the exact same kind of challenge, pushing it to its limits, trying new things, innovating. Um, do you have any kind of advice for them that are probably be watching right now, wanting to know how to use those services in their kitchens, especially in those different apartments? What colours should they be using? And particularly keeping in mind that they're on a beautiful estate. I, I think that what they should be bearing in mind is, is that they have a palette of mm. colour that, that a lot of thought has gone into. And to really get into that palette and, and pull out the colours that are going to work in their design scheme, mm. Mm. as well as using the, the, the stone fabricator who's going to make it to help them create the stone into a finished product that's really going to look great. I yeah. think that's great advice for them. Good idea. But just in terms of those colours, I mean, you guys do, you've brought out a range of colours. Do you have a particular favourite or what, what should we look for when it comes to choosing the right colour surface? I think our supernatural range is my favourite. Mm. It's a range of <laughs> colours that's inspired by um, marble and other natural materials. It's, uh, it's unique, it's got a depth of colour. Uh, it's exciting and uh, I think it's, it's going to be around for a long time. I hope our contestants are listening. Trevor, it's going to be an exciting season of Winner Home. We've got three incredible talents, beautiful apartments, beautiful location. Let's see what they can do with Caesar Stone. Absolutely. Look cool. forward to seeing it. So even though it's a modern and on trend, it still brings that classic elegance which makes it even more special, for me particularly. Whether it's in the kitchen, bathroom or your specially designed walk-in closet, its versatility and design will leave you breathless. Remember, entries for Caesar Stone's Kitchen of the Year 2016 is now open. If you have a beautifully designed kitchen which incorporates Caesar Stone that was installed any time from the 1st of January last year, 2015, until the 31st of July this year, 2016, this could be your opportunity to win big. Simply log on to www.caesarstone.co.za where you can enter and find more details, as well as all the T's and C's. Now, right now, after the break, we are getting a video call from international TV personality and wedding expert Randy Finoli. You don't want to miss it. Welcome back to Afternoon Express. Now we have another very special treat on Afternoon Express for you. Ahead of the 2016 Bridal Fair in Joburg this weekend, we're joined now via video call with celebrity guest, international TV star, designer, wedding expert and author of It's All About the Dress, Randy Finoli. Welcome back to South Africa, Randy. How's your day been so far? And are you missing your, your little dog Chewy yet? Chewy is my love. And the minute I walked out of the door, I was instantly missing him. We're together like <laughs> literally 24 hours a day. So for me to leave him for this long, is, 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 it's going to be a challenge. Oh, sweet. Now let's talk weddings. You learned to sew from the age of nine. But how did your love for wedding gowns specifically come about? Well, I think that wedding gowns are really the most important, important garment a woman will ever wear. So I wanted to be a part of that. I really was attracted to the red carpet at first, but I realized quickly in the, bridal, in, in the, in the fashion industry that those red carpet gowns were given to them. So how do you make money off that? And I entered a bridal contest when I was studying at FIT, and I won the contest and was offered a job. And then I instantly realized that this is the most important garment a woman will ever wear. So mm -hmm. for me to be a part of that was just, you know, wonderful. It's, 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 it's great to do something I love every single day of my life. That is amazing. Now, when you worked as a fashion director in a bridal salon from 2007 until, the, I think, 2012, it was estimated that you would see about 15,000 brides per year, which totaled to about 75,000 brides for the five years that you worked there. I mean, is each bride different in their wants and needs, and how so? Yes, every... Yes, every single bride is different. Her story is different. Her budget is different. Her family is different. The nuances on who's directing the appointment is different, whether the mother's in control or the father or maybe her fiancé or her best friend or whether she's in control. Every single bride that walks through those doors, you have to take them on a one-on-one -on -one basis and really kind of mirror their personality because they are so different. So every bride I've ever worked with is different, definitely. 
Although brides can sometimes turn into real bridezillas when they're planning for their wedding day. So have you ever had to deal with one specific bride that was maybe so bad that you felt like giving up your career? I have to be honest with you. I don't believe in bridezillas. <laughs> I believe in women that just want to oh, look right beautiful just... on their wedding day. <laughs> so what I find more often than not is... is entourage zealous <laughs> and the one i remember the most is i had a bride that was getting married in like a month and she had like a three thousand dollar budget which is very nice but the thing is you need six to eight months to order a gown and her friends were pulling in dresses like eight ten twelve thousand dollars and even if she had that kind of budget we couldn't get these gowns because of the delivery time. So they kept pulling in the gowns and pulling in the gowns, and I kept begging them to stop. And finally I said, look, I'm going to politely ask you to please be seated on the sofa. What I really wanted to say was not that, but the cameras were rolling, and I literally could feel smoke coming out of my ears and my face red. I was so angry because... You know, they were really wasting her time and preventing her from getting a dress. I can't believe it. Because with all the money in the world, you can't get a dress in that short amount of time because the, the beading is done in India, which takes a month. And the, the, fa the fabric comes from Italy. And to get everything done, you just can't do it. Oh, wow. Now, you're in South Africa for the Bridal Fair. Tell us a little bit about your connection to the SA Bridal Fair. And what will you be doing there this year? I'm going to be um, at the Bridal Fair South Africa. I'm going to be presenting and hopefully helping brides um, answer their questions to uh, any question they have. I really am going to answer any question they have on how to find the perfect dress for them. Um, also, I talk a bit about my past and my history growing up on a farm in southern Illinois and how I got away from that farm and got into bridal and into TV. And it, it's, a, it's kind of a lighthearted presentation and it's very inspiring and very motivational at the same point. Um, I try to inspire them to feel better about themselves on their body image issues if they have any and um, make them feel good when they're leaving, you know, the event. Now, what do you think are the, com are the, the common mistakes brides make when they're choosing their wedding dresses? So when I wrote my book, it's all about the dress. I wanted to give brides in their 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s, from size 2 to size 22, a realistic vision of how they could look in a wedding gown and look beautiful. And I think that uh, when, I, when I was researching and, and writing the book, I realized that every bridal book out there featured models. And I didn't want to show models. I wanted to show real women. But I think when writing a book, you can say, okay, this is the rule. But there's always an exception to the rule. Whenever, you know, because every woman is shaped differently. Her skin color is different. Her venue is different. Her budget is different. So uh, as soon as I say, never, ever walk down the aisle in a veil, well, maybe you want to put some flowers in the hair. So there's all kinds of rules that you can break, you know, and it's really about tradition and following what you want for the wedding and making it your own, creating it your own. So when I say, you know, wear a certain type of shoes, well, maybe brides want to wear boots, which I think are lovely if they're, you know, born on a ranch and they're, and they're, they're you know, um, you know, that's who they are. You know, they're, they're a cowgirl at heart. Then I think that's fine to do that. So I think there's lots of rules that you can break. And also even with the budget you can break. Like let's say you've uh, uh, allowed yourself $2,000 for the wedding dress. Well, let's say you find a dress for $2,500. So you take that extra $500 and you've got probably 10 vendors at a wedding. You've got the DJ or, or band, you've got the venue, you've got the florist, you've got, you know, uh, invitations, you've got everything. So you, you take, you know, what, $50 from each one of them 
And then you can put it towards the wedding dress. And so you can break that rule. Randy, you're amazing. Thank you so much for chatting to us. You're absolutely magic. Now, if you want to see Randy in person, then head over to Monte Cassino in Joburg for the 2016 Bridal Fair this weekend from the 27th to the 29th of May. Now, if you don't already have tickets, we are giving away a VVIP ticket as well as Randy, Randy's book called It's All About the Dress. All you need to do to enter is SMS the keyword express, your name and city to 3372. SMS is cost one round fifty each. T's and C's apply, and of course, find it all on AfternoonExpress.co.za. Oh, I want to do this. <laughs> I finally got Danilo Thank you. Now to admit that you. it's a woman's jersey. It's you and both of you brides in, as I promise you. Good night, happy <laughs> eating. We'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> the jacket suits you more than it does him. <laughs> <laughs>